that that I do ch- still truly feel you know extremely uh, excited about you know f- to to see what happens after this. Yeah, I think definitely one of the things I'm trying to be cognizant of, and it's something I've definitely struggled with earlier on, but been better at, is that you know these are not short term projects. Even our short term projects are you know a few years, um, and some of our projects are five, seven, ten years. And it's, you know, everything I've seen and, you know, the way everybody's spoken is, you know, this is probably a few months, you know, maybe it's two, maybe it's six, you know, obviously it's not going to be, you know, back right up to where it was like a snap of a finger. It's going to take some time, but you know, it's jobs stop because people can't physically go to work. It's not like the economy tanked or something happened where people truly lost income. It almost feels like a halt rather than a stop or a shortage. So, and look, I'm sure there's jobs that are not going to just bounce right back, right? Like the, the cook at McDonald's jobs probably going to be there when they're allowed to open up doors again and people are starting to come back in. Will they need as many workers day one? Probably not. Right. Cause people are going to be more wary to come out, but in three months after the quarantine is officially over or whatever you want to call it, I'm sure it's going to be back to business as usual. So I do think there's going to be a somewhat in the big picture, grand scheme of things, a pretty quick rebound. It's going to be more of a, a V than a, you know, a check mark where it's going to take time to kind of pop back up. Um, so if you think about it, you know, from that kind of thing, I agree with you. I think real estate's a great place to be in because over the next five years, I don't see it being hit too hard um, except from, you know, a couple different areas, which we started talking about, but maybe this is a good segue to get into. Um, one of the other questions we had was, um, what are your thoughts on impact from the virus short term and long term? And we kind of already started talking about it, obviously, just from a real estate perspective. Um, but what's some of the stuff you see short term besides collections, because we just talked about that and people being able to pay? What do you see short term? And then what do you see, you know, let's say inside the next year, we'll say short term, and then Long term, anything over a year to you know five years or something like that. Yes, I think short term, you know, the eight hundred pound gorilla in the room. What happens April first? Uh, that by far to me is going to be the biggest telltale sign of you know, of what's to come. You know, if everyone stops paying rent, yeah, it's going to suck for April. It'll suck for May. It'll suck for June. But you know, Chris, you're one hundred percent right. Um, it's going to get back to normal, right? This is not 2007 to 2009. This is not that situation. It's not, you know, there's not big financial banks crashing, right? Mm. It's not, you know, they didn't, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe there's an underlying thing here and they're right in bed mortgages and stuff like that, like they did. But um, I I do believe that, you know, you know, the other, you know, the other short-term factor is that let's say you own a business uh, and you fire 80% of your staff because you just can't support it. Well, guess what? Your competitor is doing the same thing yeah. because if you're selling, you know, well, you know, not that this business is going to be at risk of getting fired, but if you're selling apples and there's not a need for apples anymore, everyone's going to fire their staff. So what's going to happen three, six months from now or two or, or a month, 60, 90, 120 days from now, when the world gets back on its feet, all those people are going to need jobs again. Yeah. So it's going to be a shot. It's going to be a, a, a quick pickup, in my opinion, the short term. Mm-hmm. Do I think the next quarter is going to suck? Of course I do. I think it's going to be brutal. I think that, you know, distributions are gone. You know, I think that, and now listen, if you, if you have the money in the bank to make a distribution, I don't think it's smart to do it because you don't know what the long-term effect is yet. So in my personal opinion, um, I think the next three to six months are going to be tough. I think it's going to be like anything else. You know, we're going to get kicked, but we're going to get back up. Yeah. Um, do I think the repercussions of a year and five years are going to be detrimental to the real estate space? I don't. Um, if anything, I think it's very positive, but I do think this is the domino, you know, we've been on a, a bull market run for 11 plus years, you know, since 2009, it, it is when it started and it's just been a, uh, you know, it's sort of how the coronavirus is spreading, right? It's been an exponential growth for 11 yeah. years. So I do believe that, this is the domino to, you know, wake people up, you know, not unsimilar to this business where there's a lot of new people getting involved, a lot of new, you know, four or five groups coming together because they can't really raise it. They really don't have the balance sheet. Uh, I do think this is the, you know, one domino that could fall as an excuse for, you know, banks, for, you know, uh, buyers, for, you know, 
for all for all of for that whole industry, I, I think it's a way for banks to use this as a let's underwrite to a higher cap rate. Let's just be mm-hmm. a little bit more conservative instead of doing eighty percent leverage, maybe only seventy five. Right. So I think it could the twelve to twenty four month impact. I think will be much larger than the 24 month to 60 month. I think once you get to 24 months, people have a short term memory yeah. and I think that will go away. But I think the next 24 months, you know, we buy three to five deals a year. Could I see us in 2020 buying one more property? Yeah, maybe, maybe mm-hmm. two, but you know, I could easily see, you know, us scaling back just because maybe there's not as many sellers or maybe there's more sellers because there, there's fear and now because there's more sellers, it's supply and demand. There's so many properties, you, you, you could pick the best one. Um, mm-hmm. But let's let, you know, fundamentally, short term is going to suck. I think 12 to 24 months, it will be slower. 24 plus, I think will be fine. But, you know, let's call a spade a spade. There's still a, you know, millennials are a huge demographic. Gen Z and Gen Y, there's still so much positive economic signs, right? It's, you know, it's, there's still a lot of growth. There's still a lot of baby boomers that are going to be downsizing into apartments, into old age homes. There's still going to be housing that's needed. So do I think this is the end of the world? No, I don't. I think that, you know, everyone has to go into it eyes wide open, understanding that, you know, the, the near term, you know, from, you know, the next 90 days be a little leery, but you know, if a really good deal came across my desk, I would dive on it. I mean, I would, you know, if it was really good, I would still look at it the same way I'm looking at deals now. Just, you know, making sure it checks off all our boxes and is fundamentally strong. And if it's fundamentally strong, it's going to be strong. Yeah. Um, would I be going out and doing heavy lever 90% bridge loans on vacant property? Probably not. Mm-hmm. But, you know, a good deal is a good deal. And, you know, even in the downturn, you know, there were deals being bought in 2009 and 10 when people thought the world was over. So, I think the, you know, the 24 month picture here is shitty, slow, and then we'll be right back on our feet. Yeah. I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. I think it's actually going to happen a little bit quicker. I think people's memories are significantly shorter than 24 months. And I think there's going to be a lot of people, it's already started, um, you know, reaching out and having conversations of, Hey, what are you, what are you buying in this downturn? What are you buying? What are you buying? And everyone's going to be thinking, oh, this is the perfect time to buy, right? And I think what people are going to use this is as an opportunity to market the property they stole from somebody else and that it's a great deal to buy in the downturn. And they're going to use 2008 as a reference for whether it's a good deal or not is irrelevant. But that's how every deal that's going to be bought in the next 12 months is going to be portrayed is, mm-hmm. you know, messed up financials because of Corona and we're going to come in and clean it up and we're going to operate it better over the next, you know, 36, 72 months, whatever it is. Um, so I'm really curious to see what, you know, buyer's expectations are going to be like and what seller's expectations are going to be like, you know, in the next three to six months, because everybody's financials are going to be crazy. So it's going to be, you know, what is the debt even going to look like? You know, if you've got 20% bad debt, let's just say hypothetical, you know, you're not going to be able to get, you know, a five, you know, every deal you get underwritten broker puts in, you know, market expenses, market occupancy, right? Can't throw market occupancy on there when it's 20% bad debt and expect to go get 75, 80% debt. You're going to get 60% debt because you're overpaying for it basically. So it'll be interesting to see how deals trade in the next, you know, six to 12 months um, and how bad it actually gets. Um, I do think though that we're going to move right back into where we were, you know, the last 12 months, I thought, you know, a lot of things were definitely overpriced and people were very aggressive on underwriting caps and underwriting vacancies and expenses and, you know, high leverage and stuff like that. I think we'll be right back there inside the next, not inside, but right at around 12 months. I think people are going to be like, Oh, that, that wasn't that bad. Like if that's the worst that's going to happen, you know, we can get through anything or some, you know, some sort of bullshit like that. So, um, it'll be interesting to see how people change. I do think there'll be a stronger push though, for going back to the deals where you go in, you take care of the deferred maintenance and you just go five to 10 years and you try to hit a 12. You're not trying to hit a 25 IRR. You're not trying to hit a 10% cash flow. You're just going to come in, buy a quality product in a good area, not over leveraged, like you said, 65 to 75% debt, and you're going to look to hit 
a really safe, solid return of a 12, which I think because of so many deals that have traded hands over the last two, three, four, five years that have been levered at 80% and people have hit ridiculous returns of 30s and 40s and 25s or whatever you want to call it, people's expectations just went higher and higher and higher. I think there's going to be a kind of a reset button on expectations as a lot of people get hurt and have to deal with paying debt that they can't afford now over the next six months where we're talking about a relief program. If, you know, banks let them pay 50% of their mortgage or, you know, 80% of the mortgage or 20%, and then they've got to make that up over the next six months or they tack on an extra, you know, six months on the back end, however they structure it, you know, that's going to hurt that deal substantially more than the deal that was levered at 70% with fixed rate interest. So I think there's going to be a lot more demand for, you know, lower levered, solid deals than, you know, there has been over the last three years. So that I, I agree with, you know, I think the next 12 to 16 month, months, uh, you're right. I, I, I don't want to say that this was the, you know, the kick to the teeth, but you know, a 12% return is a good deal. And I just think everyone's eyes have been blurred by doubling your money, tripling your money, making a yeah. 30, right? I think that this is that reset button you were talking about that. I think that, that you know, if you can get 12% on your money annualized over a five year hold, 10 year hold, whatever it is, that's a phenomenal deal. Mm-hmm. As far as diversification goes, it, you know, if you have something wrapped up in, into that 12% return, good real estate. I mean, that, that you can't ask for anything more than that. So I, 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 I think that's spot on. Um, yeah. And I think that with social media and technology today, uh, people's, people's, uh, it's short term memory. It's in one ear and out the other so quickly that, uh, you know, I, I think 12 to 16 months from today, mm-hmm. not, you know, 12 months after the, you know, whatever happens, I think 12 to 16 months from today, um, it, you know, that's what used to be 36 months, 20, 30 years ago. Cause I think that there's so much, there's so much bombarded in front of you that it just, it, it erases your mind so much quicker. Thank you.